So there was a feature or a feature request a while ago and I'm looking to be able to filter the admin menu um, with taxonomy trees and I've kind of been working on bits and pieces here for a little while. Um, but it's just come together a little bit because I needed to create some zones on this um, general contents list. Can you zoom uh, a little bit, please? Yeah, absolutely. Just the Control Plus option for Chrome, maybe. Yeah, because I'm on a, a Mac and my keyboard um, gets confused I between see. the two. There we go. How's that? Um, yeah, so what I've done is um, what I've done is I've broken the um, the header section of the uh, contents listing in the admin menu here into zones, so that um, different features or different modules can um, apply filters to the content listing here. Um, so the first one I've I've just implemented is a culture feature, so that you can now um, filter by um, localized content. Um, and I think I did a few in Ian US as well, and probably a few in Maori. Um, so you can apply that. Um, and then I've made it extensible so that you can also um, apply taxonomy filtering. Um, so if we were to just reset this back to all cultures, and this is just the standard blog recipe with a, a few alterations. Um, we can now choose to filter by all the categories that are in a taxonomy. I can't remember if I assigned any to them. No, I didn't. Um, or we can pick another taxonomy and we can filter by all the tags. We do have to clear this one first. Um, so you can just, yeah, essentially um, increase your filtering. Um, and there was a couple of other features. I actually came across some unused code that was potentially being or could be used for um, filtering, which was there for lists. Um, so the, there was a bit of a code in the system which allows you to just list all all of the um, the list types. Um, and I've also been able to use that just to list all the localized content as well. Um, so you can just add these into custom admin menus with particular query strings on there and um, you get different features. And of course, you can implement your own, which is the um, the more useful thing. Um, so that was that was pretty much the demo. That's, and it's great. that's what we're doing. It's a great feature. We talked about it for a long time. There was a PR that came a few weeks ago that tried to do something like this, but uh, in the wrong way. Uh, something also like here you have drop downs because that's the most common thing. But the search and every module is adding their own stuff there. That's how extensive it is. There is a zone and you just have to intercept the shape of this page and then inject any shape in any zone you want. Uh, in, in this case, the, the filter zone or the header zone. And um, uh, what's the top? Left um, one. So there's, um, there's, I've done four zones. There's a, a summary zone here. Um, so you can put things into this one. There's a action zone over on this side. Um, and this will also switch right to left as well. Um, then there's a search zone here and a you create just, zone. But the search, the search box here is new, right? You made it as part of this PR. Um, no, the search box is um, is from Antoine's one a while ago when he he redid it. Um, and what does it use? Um, so it just uses the display text at the moment. For the oh, I see display text, uh, but with SQL, so it's using this. It's using also still the same extensibility of the. Yeah. Of the so what I've also done is um, is made it so that. 
um, the filters that you can implement yourselves can actually alter the query and alter the value of the options coming in. Um, so what would be the nice thing to do next is to take it more in a, um, a GitHub kind of search thing. And when you select, say, a content type to actually reflect that value up here and have, say, yeah, why not? That would, so that would be the, the next yeah. thing. So you can actually build up queries and um, an, an indirection from the route to the text and yeah. reflect the UI. But it's the same model, different views. Um, and what is the filters drop down on the left? Um, the filters drop down at the moment just shows this. Um, but because this section here is now a shape, um, you can potentially override that and um, add more filters, change the filters that you want. Um, yeah, what we provide is a good set of defaults and um, people will have their own requirements because they've built up their own yep, that's good. design that's of the site. Um, but for me, this kind of, this sorts out um, the taxonomy tree that I've been kind of wanting for a little while because you can just start to do it here rather than over on this side tree. Makes sense. Um, and I get my zones, which I needed for another PR, um, just to finish that off. Um, How are the f were these taxonomies added automatically, or did you have to set up something? Uh, so, um, the taxonomies are a part of the blog thing, the ones we're seeing here. Um, but for the taxonomy feature, I've actually made it a feature um, with a setting, so you can choose which ones you want. Um, because sometimes you may have 10 taxonomies and you don't want them all to show up. Um, so you just pick the ones that are appropriate. Um, and then we've only got the tags one. Um, the cultures, obviously, that just happens, you know, all automatically. It's not a feature. Um, there didn't seem a need for, for that to be something you turned on and off. Um, but you could also potentially, if you didn't want the culture one or if you wanted to implement your own one, you could remove the shapes. Um, same with this content type shape, you could very easily just remove that with placement. Or maybe um, a feature or setting so we can remove it. Can you um, uh, collapse the, the window, like make it small to see how it behaves on the mobile? Yeah, so I was going to actually change this to kind of be a bit more in line with the, the GitHub because at the moment it just drops down like that, which is, which is okay. Um, what GitHub tend to do is, see it starts to go off, off over here. As, yeah. as you drop down to mobile, this section will hide, then this section will hide, and then this section will hide. So the, the important ones stay visible and the other ones just disappear. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, when you're on mobile, this is... A it's a useful piece of information, but it's not as useful. Or worst case, have a, um, two two sections: one that shows for the mobile, and one that shows for the desktop. Even if it's duplicating some HTML, at least they will switch based on the breakpoint to a more mobile-friendly tagging. If you want, yeah. if, if yeah. we don't want to try to have a single set of tags and that adapts for everything, we can say okay. And uh, that break um, because it's yeah. because you can inject your own. It's hard to hard to design it exactly. Um, so yeah, dead right. Just just drop just drop a different one. I mean, it could we could lose the summary, and these could stack very easily. Yes, as an option. Um, but I was looking at how. Um, Which issue does it remember? I don't remember that issue. Um, so when we look at GitHub here, they just start to drop them off, like we produce them completely as you go down. So the milestones go and the projects go. Okay. Um, but I, I kind of lean towards yeah, two shapes: one one for mobile and one for. For desktop and the, and the, two the shapes, one. in the same shape you can you can have two sets of tags with breakpoints sorry that's what i mean yeah and in, in, okay. in the shape um yeah two bits okay. of html and one one just changes if that's simpler to handle that instead of being 
for automatic. Okay, good. That's perfect. That's very nice. We wanted that. We wanted that for a long time. Oh my God, so many beautiful things. Um, I can check the chat, but nobody cares apparently. It's like, yeah, good. <laughs> that's a super big. That's a huge deal actually, because even if people, even if people say they can't do anything, they, it's not valid for them. I'm like, just write a module and do the do the ones you want and remove the ones you don't want to see because there are features or because you can just yeah if we had a guide to show how to do that we could just let them go there. yeah i mean it, it, it's such a simple thing you know there's a, a couple of um a oh, couple we, methods yeah we'll need some documentation to at least explain the filters and where to inject stuff that's it at least yeah um it felt slow on your demo Oh, that's just because my machine is I'm trying to install updates at the moment as well. Uh, to be clear about what's happening is that building the query itself should be quick because it's just manipulating the object model with 10 filters to add to the query. It's just a service that is called and every provider can inject something on the SQL query, well, the yes SQL query, on which has a content item index. And every uh, filter can add their own with predicate to join a different table, a different index. So every module that has an index to query stuff can add something to the query. So in the end, you have as many uh, joins as you have filters applied. If you have no filters applied, you, choose, you should just have one join for the versions maybe or the culture or whatever. But if you have no filter applied, there should be so no join. And as you add filters, there will be one more join to a different table, which is supposed to be indexed in SQL because it's an index table. So you are supposed to index these fields because they are meant to be queried. So in theory, it should be very fast. Um, and you can't have a simpler query than that. Uh, we need to check with lots of content items, but that, that in theory, it should be super fast. Worst case also, then we can switch to a feature that will probably be provided by the Lucene module that will add a search box based on the Lucene module and probably handling a query like you showed for GitHub, but based on all the index. So it will use Lucene to do some search. So you might be able also in the Lucene search box to add something like a category colon something and culture colon something just to do that with a text box and Lucene instead of using uh, drop downs and SQL in case in case we need that. Um, it, yeah, might sorry, replace, no. it might replace that box actually. The, the feature will be, it will be interesting for the feature to just remove that shape and put its own Lucene based one there. Um, and that probably oh. should work. Um, Look, the shapes are removable. Uh, um, the query would just need a little bit of tweaking to abstract it, um, and and you would just swap it in. I mean, there is the option to <coughs> replace this box and also mm -hmm. to put another box beside it, um, potentially with some fields that you want to search, or you know, you can kind of do anything now. Yeah, <clears throat> if we want to still be based on SQL, then the solution will be to have a first request in Lucene that returns the content item IDs, and then the SQL is just in on the IDs with the content item IDs from SQL, from, uh, from Lucene. And this way, it's still a SQL query, but very limited because it's just loading by ID, and we don't have to abstract the kind of query to run. Uh, so that might be easier. Yeah, and that, that, the loose end that will probably need a little little step further with abstraction, but um, nah, it's no problem. Okay, it's perfect. Thank you. Beautiful. 